starts to slow down. They just gave up an exit. He could have easily pulled off here, but is choosing not to. But if they, I suspect that if he pulls over here and is even close to stopping, officers will move in at a rapid pace here to try to prevent him from getting back on the road and uh, getting back into a chase scene here. Well, and certainly, Gary, the hope is that this person will decide to pull over and uh, stop and, and, and end this peacefully. And kind of went almost down the exit ramp. He's heading down that ramp. But uh, looks like he's about to change his mind and uh, pull back on the highway, much to the frustration, I'm sure, of these police officers that he's not pulling over. Glad, I'm sure, that he's staying on the highway. But uh, slowing the exit. And that feeder road is Brentwood Star. Brentwood Star Road. All right, and take a look at this, uh, this wide picture as Gary shows us the traffic situation. Take a look at that. You can see all of that traffic stopped along the eastbound lanes of I-30 near Oakland Boulevard, where police are trying to stop this white Nissan Sentra. Uh, that is an incredible thing to see, Gary, and just an idea, some bit of evidence of how this is affecting uh, so many people right now. Yeah, this, the, those people have to be very frustrated because there's, there's a line of police officers that's not letting anybody through, and, uh, you know, they, they're not going to... There really is no place at this point. You can see the folks on the side of the road. Again, he's stopping, starting, stopping, starting. Uh, it's obvious he's not going to outrun them. But yet he continues to do this and refuses to give up. So there's something, something a little off here in terms of uh, what the plan is here. I can tilt up here and show you a little bit, but uh, there is no other offer on here for quite some time. Uh, I'm looking at least uh, a half a mile, if not more. I don't want to pan too far off of this, but at least a half a mile or more uh, before there's another exit or, 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 or an opportunity for this person to get off the highway. Okay, and Gary, as we can talk about all these folks, uh, I don't believe any of these folks on news media would be my guests, maybe one or two. That's just the public hoping to catch a glimpse of what's going on. Now, granted, they're up on top and, and out of harm's way in that area, but uh, that's the kind of stuff that they're dealing with. Uh, and officers don't have time to deal with that, and they probably won't deal with that particular incident unless it becomes a problem traffic-wise. But they've got uh, bigger issues to take care of here, keeping folks who are on. The officers themselves so far, right? Okay, I'm giving you a tight shot here. I'll zoom in here a second. And you'll see that um, this person has a cell phone. Uh, he appears to be talking on his cell phone. He's looking out the window, possibly uh, at us, at the attraction, and just weaving. We don't see anybody in either the front seat or the back seat, uh, but it appears to be an empty vehicle. But a, a very, very casual, acting very casual as he uh, one hand drives with one hand and, and visits on a cell phone with somebody uh, on the other hand. And... Uh, a very unusual shot here of being able to actually look inside this car and try and figure out what what is going on here. You can see uh, again moving his hands, changing the vehicle. More interested in what the sideshow is outside than uh, anything else. And uh, unfortunately, that's probably feeding his uh, desire not to pull over. That you know he's creating a sideshow spectacle, and he's probably pretty proud of himself for doing it. Yeah, he does uh, have a, a bit of a smirk on his face, at least from what we're seeing right now, this picture you're showing. And let me say that just a while ago, we passed the Cook's uh, Lane Bridge, and we're now hearing from Fort Worth police that uh, they, in fact, have gone onto that bridge and told people to get off quite quickly, and for two reasons. And this should, this should be emphasized to the people who are ahead of this chase, uh, that this person has a history of not, we don't know his name, the police obviously do, that this person has a history of noncompliance and apparently some, uh, some experience with the carrying of weapons. So this is why police are, are very concerned about people standing too close or impeding traffic or giving, them a, or giving them some difficulty in trying to bring this, this uh, chase to a close. Right now, his windows are all up, so that means that uh, police, I think, feel relatively comfortable. Looks like he's speeding up a little bit, Gary, from uh, what he was before. Yeah, speeding up a bit, and I, I see him spending more time looking out the window than he does looking uh, at the road. But, of course, traffic's been stopped, so he doesn't have much to worry about uh, in terms of traffic in front of him. But uh, much to his amu amusement, looking at us possibly and or the traffic on the side. Right behind him. His hazards are on. So this camera shot is, is headed east as he comes, is headed west, actually, as he comes east toward our camera. And that's, that's what that looks like. A blocked I-30. Nobody is on this road except for that one motorist and the, and the police officer sort of following. We've got sound. So this is what people are hearing coming toward them, which would explain why so many folks were getting out of their cars mm. to look, because they could hear this. And you see that flat tire there? Yeah, the right see it passenger now. tire is flat. So, which is why this person has been driving at speeds of, uh, you know, around 10 miles per hour for such a long time. Something else to take into, into consideration is that's what he is hearing as well. Mm -hmm. He's been listening to those sirens the entire mm -hmm. time. Wow. And I can tell you from riding inside a squad car with the sirens going, it'll wear you down. It's loud. In addition to speakers, you, we understand the police have been speaking to this person 
through loudspeakers. And he's trying to carry on a telephone conversation as well. Right. So this is eastbound, uh, this is uh, East Chase, the East Chase overpass we just passed underneath on eastbound I-30. You saw the news media there watching this as it goes by. And right now we're getting very close to uh, Arlington. Arlington police are going to be standing by doing the same things we're seeing police do in Fort Worth do as far as trying to clear people off those roads. And as, as we... Go ahead. Uh, he's just, uh, you'll see here on your screen here, just a, a second, he's going to pop up on the grass here, uh, change his mind at the last minute, and get off again back on an exit. Uh, I, I'm a little bit ahead of you only because we're on a delay, so I apologize for that. But uh, you'll see him, he's, he's uh, changing his mind at the last minute, cutting across grass, cutting through an intersection. There were some officers that looked like they were blocking him off. Uh, not allowing him to go further on 30, and I believe that's what may have prompted him to do that at the last minute. And now we're running along the access road of I-30, approaching, I believe, uh, well, we're about a mile from Six Flags, uh, into a parking lot. We'll uh, see him into a parking lot here. Uh, officers, one, two, three, four, five, six officers speeding up here, and uh, he's going to turn left into this parking lot. Uh, a lot of officers speeding up, trying to kick, contain this, but uh, they're having a problem here, scooting through this, this traffic. Luckily, not a lot of folks in this parking lot. He's yeah. going to turn turn here and then come back out, and it appears he's going to get back on a north-south road, but not sure what that is. Yeah, Gary, let, let, let me, uh, you're, you're on, uh, obviously you're seeing this live, we're on a bit of a delay. Let, let us see if we can talk this through here. Now headed southbound, of course, make a left turn here. Six. Relatively close uh, right now, turning all the way around, so he's going back Six. to the north uh, right now. White four-door car has been leading police uh, on this chase. They've been on I-30 for, for two hours. Here they are now in a residential part of Arlington. You see he just turned left into some kind of, uh, we can assume it's some kind of open parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, this is the old TxDOT depot off of I-30. Um, and you see him just pick up speed there and rush through. And again, this is still on a flat tire. That's what we see him doing right there on a flat tire. And he's driving okay. over the median here and back onto Collins and around the traffic. Some uh, very dangerous maneuvers here uh, as we continue to watch this driver flee police. So he is right at I-30 in Collins. Up until now, this chase has, hasn't been that dramatic. He's been leading police going maybe 10, maybe 5 miles per hour on the highway. But then a short time ago, he gets off the highway. He's now in Arlington. And now he's driving erratically through city streets. We've seen him go through neighborhoods. He's mm -hmm. going in and out, in between cars. Uh, he's whizzed by children walking uh, on the sidewalk. He has no regard. For, uh, for any traffic, and there you see him driving on the, this is, just so you know where we are, this is the road to Six Flags that he's about to get on right now. So this is North Arlington. The Westbound toward Cooper. On the right-hand side should be some kind of a golf course. Uh-oh. Well, now he's moved off of the main road, so this should be interesting to see. Gary, uh, you can see where he's headed. I don't know what is through there. Looks like he's trying to get, uh, this, this is an empty parking lot, a construction strip zone. Officers are moving in really soon. They really wanted to catch him inside there, but now uh, he's making his way back to the road, and he actually uh, will probably get out of this um, of this parking area and back onto the road again, which uh, is really disappointing because it's uh, traffic is picking up, the speed is picking up, and uh, he's southbound yeah. now on, on uh, that. That would be southbound on Collins, uh, it, Gary. If I'm correct, what you'll see up ahead of him on the left-hand side, a few blocks down, should be uh, should, should be the, the stadium. Uh, and on the right-hand side, of course, all kinds of traffic. But again, this is the busiest tra This is the busiest area in terms of retail in ter for Arlington, I think, in North Arlington, right, Gary? Yeah, it's very crowded here. Okay, you'll see them cutting up across the sidewalk over a restaurant. Uh, I'm speaking just a little bit ahead here, uh, but um, it is a very, uh, very busy section of of town, a lot of traffic, not a lot of pedestrian traffic, thankfully, but you'll see him cutting across here, look at that, cutting across onto the streets, again, trying to shorten his route and trying to lose these guys, but back out, uh, now he's going the wrong way down a street, uh, this is just increased dramatically in danger, one way down what appears to be, this is the ramp to get on, to get off That's, on one of these yeah. streets here, it's one way, and he's going the wrong way, and uh, yeah, here comes a... Go ahead, Gary. I think this is very dangerous. He's on, he's on the ramp to go the wrong way to the service road, getting off of uh, getting off of 20. He may realize that, but he, he's going to have to turn around now. Well, there he goes. So he's getting on now, Gary. He's going to be going eastbound on, on 30. Is that correct? Yes, eastbound on 30. He almost got hit by that red car, but uh, now he's back on I-30 eastbound, picking up the speed yet again and uh, trying to get back on the highway, and he probably will be successful to that here just uh, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, he has found his way now back onto the freeway. In just a second, he'll be going past there. What you'll see in coming up in just a couple of minutes, six flags will be on your right-hand side, uh, 360, uh, and then, of course, uh, headed after that, of course, into Grand 161, and then, of course, into Grand Prairie. Uh, but it uh, looks like he has managed to find his way 
uh, back onto the, the freeway. Police officers, of course, trying to, to catch up with him right now. Yeah, he's uh, actually lost quite a few of them. Uh, he's still got one or two behind him, but he lost a whole bunch of them. And, uh, but they've still got him in view, and obviously the helicopter does. And they're right next to him on the, the road. They're just waiting for that road to merge and uh, allow them to get right back on. But now they have the, the chore of breaking up this traffic again and keeping people away from, from this event. And that's, that, it's almost like they have to start all over again. And that, again, more strain on Fort Worth's resources. This is a very difficult situation for them. Yeah, yeah he's about to pass two major roads. The 360 will be coming up in just a second. So 360 and I-30. He's on I-30 eastbound headed toward Dallas. So that, uh, where he is right there, that that, uh, I cannot remember the name of that road, uh, but it's also a, a main exit. But Ballpark Way also coming up uh, relatively quickly. But after that will be 360, and then shortly after that will be, I think, uh, 161, if we're heading north on 161. But right now, again, on, on I-30, it uh, looks like he's headed, on the, he's headed to the east, uh, headed toward the Grand Prairie right now. Police officers uh, again behind him uh, in this pursuit that's been going on now since uh, since about 1:45 that we have been following all of this. So the best part of the of the uh, of the afternoon they've been following him. We initially heard that this was a simple traffic stop, but now we've learned based upon sources that Lawrence Acalic has uh, that this individual may have some extensive uh, involvement uh, with the justice system in terms of having gone to prison for 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 drugs. May also be a suspect in terms of being a drug dealer right now. Uh, and is trying to elude police because of the situation uh, that he's experienced in the past. Tanya Heiser joins us now. She's got some more information. Tanya, again, has extensive uh, background with regard to dealing with law enforcement. Go. I understand that uh, he's going to wreck out. Watch this picture as we come up. That's a police unit you see there. Let's see what happens as he pushes to the right. Well, there we go. There's the bumper. Yep, they're getting him stopped. That was a, that was a SWAT There's vehicle. That's the, yeah, you see four SWAT vehicle. on the, the police side are of using it. using the SWAT vehicle. Looks like a person trying to they get out of the a back cat, right there. Apparently. Police officers coming out, both sides of them. Oh, sorry. Police officers coming out, both sides of him right now. Some smoke coming from the, the, the white car of the suspect. Officers trying to come into the, to the inside. Again, this chase has come to a close. Asking him to get out, and it looks like he either cannot or will not. You see them poking at the window. They'll be coming around to the other side uh, and momentarily. This is a SWAT unit that's come around that's, pulled, that's brought this to a close. Police officers, again, there he is, trying to crawl out the window right now. Police officers come around, grab him, pull him out of the vehicle, bringing him to the ground now. Officers look like they're securing the situation. They don't seem to be concerned about anyone else being inside. They brought the suspect out of the vehicle. It has wrecked. Uh, so it looks like the officers are okay. The suspect now in custody. Police officers securing the scene. Tanya, uh, Iser joins me. Tanya, did you get a chance to see all that? Uh, having some difficult... Oh, I have, I'm watching it right now. Obviously, they, they use one of their SWAT vehicles to bring this thing to an end. Uh, talking to law enforcement folks, what they're saying, obviously, this became a life safety issue to allow this continue, and that's why they got the SWAT vehicle involved and, and ended this thing in the way they did. We'll, be, we'll have more on the floor about this, obviously. Tanya, Tanya, I'm not, I cannot, I cannot. Uh, we'll you, be taking Tanya, a break now, and uh, like obviously we'll have more on the 4 o'clock show. Into custody. Let's take a short break. Uh, News at 4 starts in just a moment. You're, you're watching um, NBC5 News first at 4, and as we begin the 4 o'clock hour, we continue to follow this chase that has wound through Tarrant County for the last couple of hours. It uh, started out as a slow-speed chase with a number of police officers in pursuit, and now it continues through Arlington. Don, what's now, happening right now? Now you see at the top part of our screen a tactical vehicle involved. Uh, there may be plans to uh, end this pursuit uh, with the tactical team uh, at some point uh, on the freeway. All right, Don, so we've been watching this go down for a couple of hours. If it looks like they're getting ready to use a tactical team, why hadn't they done this before? What would your guess be? That's something that Fort Worth PD will have to answer. There have been a number of opportunities for them to stop him on the freeway when he was going much slower. Uh, however, it appeared they wanted to try and negotiate with him to get him to pull over uh, safely instead of having to use some sort of force. You see parts of the tire are now starting to shred off that car, and he's going to get to a point where he's not able to control it as well. He's going to have to pull over at some point. That tire, we just saw a piece of it fly off. Uh, police in pursuit, but traffic still going by. They're, they're, they just went by the ballpark, and here he is going around other vehicles that are there on the highway. A number of police cruisers are right behind him. 
And as you can tell, he, it doesn't look like he has any uh, plan on slowing down. And if you are wondering where they are right now, they just passed Six Flags, the amusement park, on the right side. So this is eastbound I-30. Uh, this tire on this car is shredding. It's, we just saw a piece fly off. There is a tactical vehicle. And it appears the tactical vehicle is, is executing a pit maneuver. They've put him into the wall. They've okay. stopped it. This vehicle this is, is stopped. Right at 30 and 360, Don. What's happening? Right now they'll make a felony stop. They'll try and get him to get out of the car unless the tactical team removes him from the car. Okay, so now you see officers out, guns drawn, pointed right at the suspect. They don't know what he has in the car. They don't know if he's armed. And there you see them trying to get him to come out. They've, take, they've taken decisive action to stop this pursuit. They're trying to get him out of the vehicle at this point. He doesn't appear to be cooperating. I don't know if he's been disabled in this crash or if he's simply not cooperating. It looks like he's climbing out the window now. And he is obviously not going to get any further than where he's gone. So police uh, have him on the ground. Um, and this is a very different team that had been following him uh, than we saw patrol officers following him earlier. Who are these guys, Don? This appears to be the, the tactical team from Fort Worth PD. And at some point, you saw the vehicles change. Uh, you saw a pickup truck, a four-door pickup truck involved, and you certainly saw this heavy vehicle involved. And I think at some point, when they entered the city of Arlington and got to a residential area, Fort Worth PD made the decision, it's time to end this pursuit on our terms and not his terms. So this suspect is now down, uh, taken into custody by police. They pulled him out of that car as he tried to climb out of the back window there after police SWAT stopped this vehicle. Uh, and what we can say is after having watched this for two hours is that we did not see any other vehicles involved in an accident because of this. It does not appear that any other citizens were hurt because of this lengthy chase. And again, police have now ended this chase right there in the middle lanes of I-30 eastbound, not far from Six Flags. And I-30 is where most of this chase happened. They received the suspect on his feet. Again, we do not know why he was running from police. We do not know uh, whether this all started with a traffic stop or an attempted traffic stop. And so I think once he got into a residential neighborhood in Arlington, uh, they decided it was time to go ahead and intervene and see if they couldn't bring a safe end to this pursuit. And that, there is our suspect. Uh, we've been watching for the last couple of hours in a chase that moved slowly down I-30 on both directions um, and then just ended in Arlington near 360 and I-30, not far from Six Flags. Uh, and he is there on the side of the road with um, some injuries uh, to his face, which could have occurred uh, when police stopped the car or even when he attempted to climb out of the back window. Um, but he does appear to have some blood on his face. And you do see uh, medics attending to him there on the road. So this is happening right uh, in the middle of I-30. This all started there in East Fort Worth at about 145. It went all the way to Ridgemar Mall, then went back to the east side, all at very slow rates of speed between 5 to 10 miles per hour and then it wound its way through Arlington. The suspect led police through the city streets of Arlington, around the ballpark, around Six Flags Over Texas, around uh, neighborhoods as well, going in and out through traffic, going the wrong way on some roads. Mm -hmm. Then he eventually got back onto I-30 and that's when, that's when you saw what just happened. The pit maneuver, the SWAT team came in, got this guy to stop and pulled him out of the car, and there he is assessing him. Yeah, and there they are assessing and, him. And they are treating him right now, treating his injuries. You see them putting a neck brace on them. And you know, we should point out, we've been following this for a couple of hours, and this is our first good look at this suspect. Um, we saw him on the phone in the car and uh, looking out of the window, but now we see him uh, head on, exactly uh, the person we've been watching police follow for this length of time. They just put a neck brace on him. Uh, we did see the EMTs there um, just checking him out and checking to make sure to see if he has any injuries. And you do see a stretcher there. Uh, we saw an ambulance following behind for a, quite, a, a, quite a distance. Um, and uh, you see that they're about to put him on a backboard there and uh, possibly take him off in an ambulance. Don, with all your years of experience with the Dallas County Sheriff's Department, do you think that this ended the way it should have? Oh, absolutely. At, at some point, it becomes so dangerous that you have to intervene and shut the chase down. And it got to that point. How much time do you think we can? How much time do you have? Can we, do we, can we stick it out till they put them on the gurney? <clears throat> Jack, when they put them in the ambulance, we're going to have to go.
up here. Just west of 360. News in downtown Los Angeles where a pursuit is happening right now. Bill Thomas is live in Air 7 HD over the scene. Bill. Ooh. This is a wicked pursuit. These speeds are phenomenal on these very small surface streets in downtown LA. This guy's made so many twists and turns in the past 10 or 15 seconds. I lost what street he's on, but essentially he's just north and west of the Staples Complex near downtown LA. I can't tell exactly what kind of car it is, but LAPD officers are telling us this is reported as a stolen vehicle. So it's a Grand Theft Auto suspect. Looks like a small Honda Civic now at incredible speeds on these very small and narrow surface streets. Trying to get around all these buildings, give you the best shot of that car. Now we're on westbound on 11th Street, driving on the wrong side of the street. Those little Honda Civics, they come with small engines, four, uh, four cylinder engines, and I believe they're about a 1.6 or 1.8 liter engine, but they've got a lot of low end torque, which really works out well for that suspect here on these small surface streets off the line. He can hit it, and they can hit top speeds very rapidly. Running a stop sign off of 11th now, making that northbound turn, and these are very narrow surface streets. This time of the afternoon, coming up on 5 o'clock, a lot of folks are coming home from work. School, after school programs, letting out folks, uh, youngsters, working around these small surface streets, trying to get back home, and they made another illegal left turn, almost plowed into a number of people here. This is Olympic now, westbound on Olympic, trying to get around that traffic, so he just pulled into a pumping station, into a fuel station, around all that traffic, uh, cutting off other traffic there, running stop signs, red lights, and right back onto Olympic. This is westbound on Olympic, which is better than those other smaller, narrow surface streets. Olympic, as you can see here, has three westbound lanes, so he's got a little bit of breathing room, but this is the afternoon rush hour right now, so as you can imagine there is a lot of congestion here. He's approaching Hoover. He was trying to use yeah. the center divider, but uh, nearly got caught off by somebody right there. In and out of the fast lane on the wrong side of the street. Again, coming up on Hoover, westbound Olympic, and uh, almost oh, just nearly missed somebody right there. He's just passing Hoover now, westbound on Olympic. And once again, LAPD officers telling us this is a Grand Theft Auto suspect. This is reported as a stolen vehicle, a Honda Civic. But as you can see, this thing can get real good speeds in a very short period of time. Extremely dangerous driving on the wrong side of the road, running red lights, running uh, stop signs. As we continue westbound on Olympic, I believe we're coming up on Vermont right now, and we're averaging speeds here of about 50, maybe 60 miles per hour. Look at all these pedestrians right in the middle of that cross. Oh. Oh, no. just narrowly getting missed by that suspect and police officers open up the shot for you just a bit you might think he's alone but he's southbound of Vermont with a number of LAPD officers right behind him they're waiting for that right moment to implement that pit maneuver first off they have to get approval from a supervisor second they've got to do it in an area where they're not going to risk harming anybody any pedestrians in the area other foot traffic other uh, any other traffic in the area southbound of Vermont now we'll get around that building and we're coming up on Pico now so we're not too far from Koreatown and we're just a little west of downtown LA Ooh. once again he's on the wrong side of the street LAPD officers now telling us this was a pursuit they had the lights on the side we're now they're going into what they call tracking but this guy's driving so erratically he's such a danger to everyone around downtown LA and west of downtown LA. They're going to back off a little bit right now. You just saw that helicopter fly through the shot, that gray helicopter. That's actually an LAPD helicopter. We're about 40, uh, 40, 45 miles per hour right now. Coming up on a red light, he's going to run right through it, narrowly missing some cars and pedestrians right there. Uh, once again, LAPD officers backing off just a bit. It's a little too erratic, so they're going to go into tracking mode right now. They're still in the area. They still know where he's going. And even if that suspect can no longer see those LAPD cruisers in his rearview mirror, even if he can't hear the sirens or see those lights, they are still very nearby. There are a number of LAPD officers just swarming this entire area. And there's also that LAPD helicopter on top, so they're going to watch his every move. Now he's making a right turn. Uh, he's going to go westbound. We'll get that street for you in just a couple of seconds. They're going to call that and once again, that is reported as a Grand Theft Auto suspect, according to LAPD officers, and a small Honda Civic uh, westbound. Now, it's going to be Washington Boulevard westbound from Vermont. And fortunately, Washington Boulevard, as you can see, three lanes, LAPD traffic going right under us. Three lanes here westbound, and even though they are tracking boat now, they're staying right on top of this guy, following his every move, making a left turn, unfortunately, onto a smaller and more narrow surface street. It's only two lanes right here. He's actually using both of them, just with reckless abandon, driving at incredible speeds on these very narrow streets. And at one point, looks like he's slowing down right now. He might try to slow down, pull over to the shoulder, and then maybe just try to get out and make a run for it. But look at that. LAPD officers, a matter of 15, maybe 20 feet away. They're preparing now. This could be court I believe is the name of that street, and it looks like he might might be coming to a stop. This is a grand theft auto suspect, and according to the LAPD officers, there are a number of people in that car. That means the suspect, there could be additional suspects, there could be hostages. We just really don't know right now. That's why LAPD, they're keeping their uh, little bit of a distance here. This is Cordova, a little west of downtown LA, and just a little north oh, of the out. Park freeway. Now the driver out making a run for it. Other people in the car, we're going to stay with the driver. LAPD officers are going to stay behind with the other people in that car. They'll have those people wrapped up in no time at all. I don't think they got out, but this guy's running, and he's running at a good clip. Tall guy, blue jeans, black shirt, black cap. If you live in this neighborhood, stay indoors now. He's coming up on Vermont with a number of LAPD officers in their cars and on foot. They're right behind this guy. Let's open up and show these LAPD officers. They're very, very close. This guy is running so rapidly. There they are, right behind yeah. him. They go, mm -hmm. Here he comes. Now he's going into a he's door, out. going into a business, but LAPD officers right behind him, and they're going to go right into that business, whatever it is, try to get this guy out of there before he takes somebody hostage or there's any harm to anybody inside. So we're going to open up a little wide now. We've got the rear entrance here. There could be some other entrances and exits to that building. We're going to come around and try to get every corner possible until we see LAPD officers come out with that suspect. So once again, that came to a stop. That was an LAPD pursuit over on Cordova, I believe. That was a small surface street just west of downtown LA. Uh, Grand Theft Auto suspect and a number of other people in that Honda Civic. We saw when the car came to a stop. Driver got out, made a run for it, ran into this company. We're not sure what this is, but it is surrounded by LAPD officers on all sides. LAPD officers inside as well. 
And we're going to keep it a little bit wide here to see if anybody comes out on any of those entrances or exits. And the car that stopped just a couple of blocks away, those people will be apprehended by LAPD officers. Now, the suspect, we understand, has been taken into handcuffs. He's inside of that uh, store right now. He'll be coming out in a matter of moments. Once they get the handcuffs on him, we'll see him come out. And hopefully this thing will be all wrapped up, what uh, LAPD officers refer to as Code 4. And then we'll have a little bit of time to backtrack over to Cordova and see how many people were in that other car and what their role in this pursuit was. But this was a grand theft auto suspect, according to LAPD officers. And we believe that suspect who ran into this building is in handcuffs and has been taken into custody. So come around to the front side now. I'm going to throw it back to you in the studio as we that suspect in handcuffs to come out with LAPD officers. Hey Bill, are you in uh, any range at all to see that the car from your vantage point, see who else was in that car? I'm just curious if that was a carjacking or perhaps. Well, we're stay right here right now. We're about a half okay. mile away from the car. We're very close to West Adams High School. I don't believe the high school is threatened right now. It looks like classes have all uh, gone for the day. I don't even see any after school activity on the campus, but uh, very close to West Adams High, just north of the Santa Monica Freeway. You can see LAPD officers in front of this building. It looks like they're standing down. You can tell by their posture. Uh, this yeah. thing has been wrapped up and the suspect in the store is in custody. And once we see that suspect come out of this business, then we'll have a chance to backtrack, as I said, David, and we'll check out the car and uh, check out Cordova where that vehicle came to a stop. So Shot okay. here. And there he is. Right, is. Right. With LAPD officers, and there he is. That's the guy we were watching. Uh, we mentioned him moments ago when he was running away. The blue jeans, the black cap, the black shirt. But clearly, even though he ran into that company, we'll try to find the name for it. He uh, has been brought out in handcuffs by LAPD officers. And in just a couple of moments, we'll go back to the car and see if anyone else has been taken into custody. All right. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Bill. We're going to check back with you uh, as they wrap this up. Uh, we'll get an update from you in just a few seconds. In the meantime, the SUV has now stopped it's almost in a residential area. A white SUV, and the, guy, the driver's got the window open. And we don't oh. know much about like what something coming from the this vehicle. pursuit took place, but you can see that driver's side tire smoking right there. So perhaps he's run over something. Do we know what street this is on? Um, we don't, but uh, from what we understand, a little bit uh, before we uh, got onto this pursuit here, we understand that there were some spike strips that were laid down on the street, and so that perhaps is why there that is smoke tire. emanating there from the tires. So a police pursuit now underway on surface streets in South L.A., and we just saw one of the L.A. Sheriff's Department helicopters there overhead with him as he goes across that intersection there and across that crosswalk. Two people crossing that crosswalk as he makes this left turn. Onto Normandy. He's on Normandy now. Now this is a white Chevy, excuse me, turned off Normandy. This is a white Chevy Tahoe. Looks like an early 90s model. And we're told that the suspect is believed to be armed and dangerous, according to the L.A. Sheriff's. I think okay. armed says it all if you're in a police pursuit. Armed and dangerous. At this point, uh, we do believe or can only see one person in this vehicle. Now we're told the driver's been driving in circles uh, and that he's trying to talk to people as he drives past them. That was when he was in the area of Vermont and about 43rd. But he's, he's, blocked. He's, he, blocked. he's not going very fast through this neighborhood. He was reaching speeds of up to 60 miles an hour at one point, but it looks like he's taking it slow in these residents. Okay, then he's slowing down. So the, the tires, we understand, are not, they, although they tried to deploy the uh, spike strips before, they were not effective or he, they didn't deploy them in time. Going northbound on Western here, and oh, we understand, the the right there, and here comes a crosswalk again. Oh, stopping for pedestrians. Well, that's a good thing. Stopping for a pedestrian at a very busy intersection. And he slowly continues to try to make his way across, oh, stopping all the traffic anyway. Through the traffic then, in this busy intersection. You know, LA drivers, Oof. why would they even stop? Would you stop? <laughs> I mean, that, that was a. So as that he, was suspicious. He, he continues to go. Uh, as I was saying, they, they tried. They attempted to put some spike strips down earlier. Unsuccessful. The smoke that you saw emanating from under the so that's wheel well from there. Somewhere was, else. It was. It was the brakes. It was the brakes. But so. they were trying to use those spike strips to slow him down. You can see he's got the window open. It looks like he's holding onto a cell phone there. Uh, and apparently, he was yelling out the window, trying to talk to people as he as he went by. White Chevy Tahoe, again, the suspect believed to be armed and dangerous, going through the streets.
But uh, the earlier reports were that the suspect was, in fact, armed, this kidnapping suspect, as he was described to us. Yep. So then that means that they uh, would have been certainly justified. And if they saw a weapon in his hands, they would be justified in firing at him. Uh, he is on the porch of this house. There's a dog there. And then there's a dog there that looks like it's tied up. He's laying down on his back. And he is, uh, I can't tell if he's got something in his hands or not. Yeah, we um, can't tell either. That looks like a dog from the house from the neighborhood. He is still moving. He he's down. He's shot. He is injured, and we do see that uh, there's some blood on his shirt indicating he has been shot. And we're hearing now that he does have a gun in his hand. Okay. That's why LA County Sheriff's deputies right now are keeping a little bit of a wide berth. I think the shot for you is a little bit wider. Uh, he apparently has been hit. He is bleeding, but he is still on the ground, and he is moving. And because uh, Sheriff's deputies believe he has a, uh, does have a, a gun in his hand right now, it wouldn't be in anyone's wide berth for the LA County Sheriff's helicopter in the area. We can't tell if he actually is holding that gun in his hand right now. That's the information we did hear earlier from sheriffs on the ground. Here's some information we just got. SWAT deputies from the LA County Sheriff's Department, they've been dispatched. Not sure what their ETA is, but they are on the way right now to assist in the situation. That's suspect as you can see, is down on the ground. Appears to have been shot by LA County Sheriff's deputies. We had a tighter shot a short while ago. He's up and he's moving now. That's incredible for someone to be shot to have a bullet inside their fe flesh to pierce what appears to be his stomach or maybe his chest and still be able to sit up, communicate, and talk with sheriff's deputies. That is really astonishing. So they might want to also start thinking about, gee, maybe the guy is under the influence of some kind of drugs, alcohol, some kind of medication. It's incredible that someone who's got a bullet in them could actually sit up and still talk. He seems to be very agitated. As you mentioned, Mark, when the chase came to an end, the suspect out of his car, making threatening gestures towards sheriff's deputies, uh, being very agitated toward deputies not cooperating or complying with their commands, made a run for it, and uh, for some reason, sheriff's deputies for their own life or the lives of their partners or other folks in the neighborhood uh, they did shoot at. He had what appeared to be some kind of a weapon. There was an exchange of gunfire, and uh, that might be the suspect down on the porch. Large fellow on the ground. Yeah, he is on the ground. He's surrounded by sheriff's deputies. But because they believe he had a gun, that's what led to the gunfire. It looks like a chest or a belly wound. Uh, we don't know if anybody else who was in the car, but he was a, a kidnapping suspect. Uh, you can see there's blood on the shirt as well. But LA County Sheriff's deputies, they're not sure exactly the condition of that suspect. So they're not sure if he's still armed, therefore dangerous. So they're keeping a little bit of a wide berth. They're trying to communicate with him just a little bit. But right now, I'm not sure if you can see my shot, but I can't see the house surrounded by LA County Sheriff's deputies. They've got their guns drawn. If firefighters are here at this point, they're being held out because this is still a potentially very 
very volatile situation. Looks like when he got out of the car, you see all the sheriff's deputies have our picture now. When he got out of that SUV, he jumped out, apparently made a run for it. And again, Mark, you saw this, I didn't, but I heard you mentioning that uh, you believe he had a gun. There was an exchange of gunfire. I'm not sure if the suspect shot, but uh, apparently LA County Sheriff's deputies did shoot at him. He made he several threatening gestures down. at the end of the at the end of the pursuit. He got out of the vehicle. Normally, people get out and they either give up or they run. Those are pretty much the two things they basically did. Okay. He did not do that. He reached into his waistband on, and, and made several what would appear to be threatening moves and yelled at his pursuers, yelled at the uh, sheriff's deputies, and gestured wildly. I couldn't tell from our vantage point, from Air Seven, some 800 feet in the air, with the camera starting to widen out, whether he actually had a weapon in his hands. But uh, the earlier reports were that the suspect was in fact armed. This kidnapping suspect, as he was described to us. Yep. So then that means that they uh, would have been certainly justified. And if they saw a weapon in his hands, they would be justified in firing at him. Uh, he is on the porch of this house. I see a dog there. And then there's a dog there that looks like it's tied up. He's laying down on his back. And he is, uh, I can't tell if he's got something in his hands or not. Mm. Yeah, um, I can't tell either. It looks like a dog from the house, from the neighborhood. He is still moving. He is down. He's he shot. Is injured, and we do see that uh, there's some blood on his shirt indicating he has been shot. And we're hearing now that he does have a gun in his hand. Okay. That's why LA County Sheriff's deputies right now are keeping a little bit of a wide berth. Make the shot for you. It's a little bit wider. Uh, he apparently has been hit. He is bleeding but he is still on the ground and he is moving. And because uh, Sheriff's deputies believe he do has, uh, does have a, a gun in his hand right now, it wouldn't be in anyone's right birth for the LA County Sheriff's helicopter in the area. We can't tell if he actually is holding that gun in his hand right now. That's the information we did here earlier from Sheriff's on the ground. Here's some information we just got. SWAT deputies from the LA County Sheriff's Department, they've been dispatched. Not sure what their ETA is, but they are on the way right now to assist in the situation. That suspect, as you can see, is down on the ground. Appears to have been shot by LA County Sheriff's deputies. We had a tighter shot a short while ago. He's up and he's moving now. That's incredible for someone to be shot, to have a bullet inside their flesh, to pierce what appears to be his stomach or maybe his chest and still be able to sit up, communicate, and talk with Sheriff's deputies. That is really astonishing. So they might want to also start thinking about, gee, maybe the guy is under the influence of some kind of drugs, alcohol, some kind of medication. It's incredible that someone who's got a bullet in them could actually sit up and still talk. Here's me very agitated. As you mentioned, Mark, when the chase came to an end, the suspect out of his car, making threatening gestures towards sheriff's deputies, um, being very agitated toward deputies, not cooperating or complying with their commands, made a run for it. And uh, for some reason, sheriff's deputies fearing for their own life or the lives of their partners or other folks in the neighborhood, uh, they did shoot at and uh, hit, apparently, that suspect who's down on the ground, breached this property and collapsed on that front porch. He was laying down and uh, appeared to be writhing in pain. But at this point, he has sent sheriff's deputies to move in and take that suspect into custody. But the entire area surrounded, there's absolutely Absolutely nowhere for that suspect to run or hide. Sheriff deputies on the street. We got the canine unit here. here. A couple of uh, helicopters up as well. Yeah, you got deputies behind that shield for some measure of protection. And it uh, looks like uh, SWAT deputies at one point they're looking at him, they're pointing at him, and they might be devising a plan to start moving in. Mm -hmm. At least four SWAT deputies have that suspect surrounded. It appears there an, an approach is imminent. <coughs> excuse me, of this uh, individual. Yep, it does here appear that go. way. Here they go. They have that shield that I mentioned earlier. Uh, they did shoot at and uh, hit, apparently, that suspect who's down on the ground, breached this property and collapsed on that front porch. He was laying down and uh, appeared to be writhing in pain, but at this point he has sent sheriff's deputies to move in and take that suspect into custody. But the entire area surrounded, there's absolutely nowhere for that suspect to run or hide. Sheriff's deputies on the street. they got the canine they unit here, a there. couple of uh, helicopters up as well. Yeah, you got deputies behind that shield for some measure of protection. And it uh, looks like uh, SWAT deputies at one point, they're looking at him, they're pointing at him, and they might be devising a plan to start moving in. At least four SWAT deputies have that suspect surrounded. It appears there an, an approach is imminent, <coughs> excuse me, of this uh, individual. Yep, it does appear that go. way. Here they go. They have that shield that I mentioned earlier and watch out for the cat at the bottom of your screen not really know uh, doesn't really know what's going on but uh, that is the property they're getting closer and closer behind that shield you've got two sheriff's deputies in the light tan shirts one deputy holding up that shield and then the swat deputy just behind him with a high powered rifle that could be an automatic weapon mark as you had mentioned earlier uh, these guys are brutally well fortified they're extremely well trained and they uh, go through training year round to prepare for situations circumstances just like this so he might have moved in just okay. to get a closer look he's got the uh weapon apparently pointed toward the suspect on the porch open up that shot for you just a bit he's opening up the gates and then backing off just a little bit all the while most likely still communicating with that suspect they he's know moving. exactly what they want him to do and if they have to they'll use a variety of different languages if he doesn't speak english they could use a variety of other uh, means to communicate with that suspect they want to get rid of that gun and surrender peacefully they approach the suspect they approach that front gate they open it or apparently tried to open it and now they're backing off on 43rd on Vermont, uh, at Vermont Avenue. okay so they couldn't open the gate that was uh, that's part of the problem here so that's the tactical problem that has presented itself um
They've got their guns trained on that guy. He is coming out. He's got his hands up. He is most likely seriously injured. He's uh, trying to understand what they're trying to tell him. You want him to get down to the ground? He's gesturing toward them. And he has to want his hands up in the air. They want him to get face down on the ground right now. As he approaches, gets closer and closer. This is being uh, a situation less and less threatening for LA County Sheriff's deputies because he's got his hands up. It is an oversized T-shirt, so he could reach theoretically for another weapon if he needs to. We're going to reposition. But it uh, looks like he's walking right to deputies. He's within just a few feet. They've got their guns drawn and trained on him. He is injured, therefore somewhat incapacitated. We're going to reposition the helicopter to come around to the south side, complying with their very commands right now. They're being very specific. Get down on the ground. We know you're injured. Look at all that blood. He's lost a great deal of blood. We're going to double up now to give you that shot. He is down on the ground, very seriously injured. We've got the canine unit here. There he is at the bottom of your screen. They're putting the handcuffs on that suspect, and they are treating this gentleman very, very gingerly. They're being very gentle with him. He is in custody, very seriously injured, pulling the canine out, pulling that police dog back out. And in time, firefighters, they're very nearby. These are sheriff's deputies, uh, SWAT deputies. They're also very well trained at first aid. They have paramedics with the LA County Sheriff's Department. So if they have to come in and treat the suspect before the firefighters are brought in, that's fine as well. We haven't seen them clear that car just yet. So at any point, they're going to approach the SUV. That was a kidnapping suspect. They're going to make sure there's no one else inside that car. This appears to be the only suspect. There was a, a situation that was a pursuit a short while ago. It ended here on 43rd off of Vermont. Deputies in fear of their own life when they saw that uh, suspect with a weapon fired on that suspect. He was injured, ran for it into the neighborhood, stopped on somebody's porch, collapsed with a handgun, and just moments ago, fortunately, walked away from that handgun and now being treated by L.A. County Sheriff's SWAT deputies. These are paramedics, so they take care of him right now while L.A. City firefighters are being held out. This may be a belly wound. This may be a wound to the back as well. That's where the bulk of the blood is right now on his back. Even though they are treating him, he is in police custody. He is in handcuffs, but they'll do all they can to assess his uh, situation. And then in a short while, he'll be transported to a hospital. But first, we're going to shout out just a bit for you because they are starting to pull his trousers down just a bit, and it might get a little grab for you. But fortunately, uh, this situation, a kidnapping suspect, a wild pursuit, shots fired, a suspect injured, no deputies were hurt to the best of our knowledge, but fortunately the suspect in custody, and at moments they'll approach that SUV in the middle of your screen, clear that SUV to make sure there's no one else inside. Live from Air 7 HD, I'm Bill Thomas, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. So again, this uh, pursuit and standoff has come to an end. Uh, deputies cutting deputies cutting off his uh, shirt and cuffing him. They now have him in custody, so this was a, a very dangerous situation that now has appeared to come to an end. So coming up in just about nine minutes, uh, KODC LA 56, um, Eyewitness News at 7 p.m. with Ruta Shavazi tonight and Mark Brown. Stay tuned, we'll have a complete wrap-up of this situation and all the day's news. You can see the wounded gunman now being taken by SWAT officers and sheriff's deputies on a backboard. He's going to be taken to a nearby ambulance. This was the end of a police pursuit where the gunman got out, pulled a gun, fired at the police, then took refuge on a porch nearby. He was shot in the abdomen. He has been bleeding for well over an hour. And now he has finally surrendered and is getting the medical treatment chair that we thought that he would get minutes and minutes ago. It has been uh, an incredible, um, you know, last hour and a half that we've been watching this, uh, that the man is uh, still alive is incredible. And, um, you know, that he was standing and like drinking water on the porch. And, and it was just one of those things that you've never seen before. We want to go to Steve Kuj. He's on the ground, part of our team coverage here um, on this uh, standoff in South L.A. that has now come to an end. Steve. Yeah, we just saw the man being loaded up into the ambulance. His friends and family have now gathered here on the, on the police tape, as close as they can to see him. Uh, they're cheering his name on. Uh, family have identified the suspect to us as Miguel Hector Pugo. The story we're getting is that he may have stopped by his house and tried to uh, take his stepdaughter. His wife then called police. So that's where the kidnapping um, charge comes from. The chase starts. The suspect, Miguel, comes back here to the neighborhood, goes to his family's house, says, I'm not going back to jail. This is what they told me. They knew he had a gun on him. They knew he was serious. They were very, very worried for his safety. A few minutes ago, we saw what uh, we were told was this man's three sisters walking back here to the crime tape, trying to approach him, maybe that is what urged him to surrender and have this finally end peacefully. Again, this man, Miguel Hector Pugo, being loaded up into the ambulance. We're going to have much more on the story coming up at the KTLA 5 News at 10 o'clock. Stay with us. All right, real quick, up to Tim Lynn for about 30 seconds to uh, give us his vantage point. Tim. Well, you can see right there, they brought him down the, on that backboard, placed him into Rescue 99 for LA, LA City Fire. And once they get him established in the ambulance, off he'll go, more than likely, over to County USC for trauma support there to treat him for that wound. So that's the latest. Let me send it back down to you. All right, Tim Lynn in Sky 5. The end of a police pursuit with a gunman fired as he got out of a, an SUV in South LA, fired at police. They fired back. They struck him. That was well over an hour and a half ago. The man stood bleeding on the porch. Now it's ended. He's getting medical attention. That's right. Thank you so much for joining us here on the KTLA News at 6. For this breaking news in South LA, we'll have more tonight on KTLA News at 10. And Good night. Here we go. Belkies, I'm back with you. Belkies, sorry about that. No, no. No worries. Right. This uh, chase started in Fort Lauderdale in the area of Broward Boulevard in about 3rd or 4th Avenue. I believe it was on the east side. Uh, came westbound on Broward Boulevard, then northbound up past Sunrise. Police officers giving chase. There was another incident that was occurring at the same time, Belkies, over by Port Everglades. So a Broward Sheriff's Office helicopter was up and immediately responded over here. We have not yet gotten a reference on why they are pursuing this vehicle, but as you can see, traveling at a very high rate of speed here on I-95 uh, going northbound. Again, as we pulled up on the location here, it was traveling erratically uh, as we broke into programming. You saw it go up on the sidewalk there. That was an area of a roadway just to the east of I-95, north of Sunrise. The next. Uh, Next road that uh, that goes uh, uh, east and west there, uh, and the intersected got onto the uh, onto the eye and onto the ramp there, and is now northbound. I'm looking out my window here just to catch my breath here and to look at at the uh, 
let me just hear here. Cypress Creek, we are at Cy right on the, on the on that inside breakdown line. That's exactly correct. Just going past Cypress Creek Road here, northbound during rush hour, or just a premiere, a preview of rush hour traffic here. Yeah. Right. Uh, let me let me let me just take a peek over here. It looks like he's heading toward the exit ramp. I don't know whether he's going to get off the road or on the or stay on the the eye going up here. But uh, we are doing 109 miles an hour in Skyforce HD right now as he end, exits here. This is uh, he, he was getting off at Atlantic. Now he's continue. It goes around. Dangerous move there around a, a slower moving vehicle, another slower moving vehicle. We want to take a second here to warn our viewers at home that this is live, unedited right now. Footage coming from the chopper directly into your living room. So uh, govern yourselves accordingly as to what you watch as the vehicle goes off the roadway there into the grass. Again, trying to elude police officers on the ground. As I said earlier, there is a Broward Sheriff's Office helicopter up here as this vehicle now starts to go eastbound. Exits off I-95 and is going eastbound. Joe, the road, you know? Yeah, the road, Joe? It's Atlantic. All right. right, northbound, he was going on Atlantic eastbound. He is now going northbound on one of the side roads east of, uh, of the eye here. Again, trying to elude police officers, uh, trying to get more information as to exactly why uh, the driver and or uh, occupants are trying to flee from police. But uh, uh, there were uh, vehicles on the ground following this vehicle. And now it continues, as we said earlier. I'm going to bring the camera. We're back up. We're back up. Yeah, all right. Now, I believe, Joe, what, what municipality would we, would we be in? We're in Pompano now. That's what we're being told. We're, we're southwest of the Pompano Airport. Here is this vehicle, again, continuing at a very, very high rate of speed. Uh, amazingly, no accidents have occurred at this point. But again, a uh, very dangerous situation out here on the highways. As you can see, he's on Dixie Highway there. That's at 10th Street. And he continues northbound now, making a left and going westbound. Just so he's basically going westbound. just driving around in his uh, Again, just trying to maneuver. This is northbound on Dixie from 10th Street. It looks like he's just done a little bit of a, of a, of a, of a swerve maneuver to turn himself around. The right. police, I mean, he's going one direction, makes a U-turn, makes right. a U -turn, goes in the other direction. Now it looks like he's going opposite he's, traffic there. Uh, right, against traffic on Dixie Highway here, just north uh, of, uh, of the, or parallel to the airport. He's on the west side of the Pompano Airport here. I'll bring the camera back out. You can see uh, airport property right over there. But again, making another dangerous move here, going westbound. Uh, he's going to be right along the railroad tracks here as he comes back up to this is all of uh, uh, single family homes in this area uh, you got the chopper 10 o'clock uh, Ralph okay. uh, just to, to clarify he's now in Pompano Beach and yes. I know that you mentioned that there's a BSO chopper over him but are there any uh, cop cars on the road trailing him or he's as he managed to at least elude the cops on the road but you know obviously the chopper is always on top no, of there, you Belky, there are a number of police officers following we've got some undercover vehicles our fear right here is that if we pull out too far we're going to lose the uh, sure. lose this vehicle to, as we continue to follow its activities. But uh, again, we'll bring it out here. You see him go He's right really there. He's really flying like down that residential street. Yeah, He's really flying very, through. Very we can't see it's speed. very clear. Yeah. Hopefully there's West no kids point. walking home from school in that area, no pedestrians. Right. That's very, very dangerous. Going around here, we, we're, we're, he's westbound, and there's, you see a police officer pulled off the side of the road to allow that vehicle. He's going underneath I-95, now coming out on the other side of I-95 with a police officer in pursuit. And now we see, now the, now the cop uh, uh, pursuing him is now in our shot, or was for a minute there. Ralph, I'm going to bring in the guys at the news desk real quick. Do we know sure. at this point how this started, why this started, anything? All right, we're working our sources, and uh, our Broward news desk is also trying to figure out why this thing even started in the first place you mentioned something else was going on when this started Ralph, but we're not sure why police are chasing the person in this vehicle or persons we don't know how many people are in it right, in the there, car. The, right the, the other incident was an unrelated incident at the port which we'll go uh, we'll be covering later in our news stories but right now uh, just passing or coming up on power line road here you see about to try to merge with traffic there it's gonna pull out and just misses colliding with that vehicle that was going northbound here on power line uh, we are uh, watching this very, very closely. There are units, as we indicated earlier, that are pursuing this vehicle. Unknown why they want to get this vehicle to stop, but obviously the driver and or passengers refusing to stop at this time. A U-turn now being made. Joey's going to be turning around, coming back at us here. We're also so going southbound. Ralph, we're also coming up here on 7 News at 4 o'clock. 
So we're going to keep you in the air in Seven Sky Force, and we're going to bring in Lynn Martinez and Jeff Lennox, and they're going to pick it up right now on 7 News at 4 for us. Guys? All right, Belkis, thank you very much. Rob Rayburn, thank you for these live pictures. Again, if you're now just joining us, 7 News at 4 o'clock begins with this developing story. We've been following this chase for a couple of minutes now. It's a police chase in Pompano Beach. Uh, again, this is Limerick, <laughs> along with Jeff Lennox. And this guy, Ralph, uh, is, uh, who knows what this person is thinking, uh, making a bunch of U-turns, maybe thinking he can get away from the police who are hot on his tail, along with us and this police chopper. Can you tell us what, way, what road he's on now? We are on, uh, following him on power line. Uh, the driver there, you see another police vehicle pulling behind as he tries to elude police officers. Now this is going to be a multi-county chase because we've crossed, or at least a multi-city uh, municipality chase here as we have an unmarked uh, mark unit here, uh, black and white there, chasing this vehicle here through uh, the neighborhoods. I'm going to give you the address here in just one second. We, are, we made a couple of sharp turns here and my GPS recalibrated and reset itself on its own here. So we're following this vehicle. This uh, pursuit began in Fort Lauderdale uh, in the downtown area right near on Broward Boulevard. Uh, it's when we picked it up and the, uh, this vehicle, this white vehicle with the black top there, uh, try, has been trying to elude police there. He's bailing out right here now. and pinned the door shut there. The driver's, the driver's not going anywhere. You can see a civilian there, a weapon drawn here as they try to take this subject into custody. Again, uh, as we get more information on it, we'll let you know why they're stopping the vehicle. But again, the pursuit uh, uh, leading from the uh, Fort Lauderdale all the way up through Pompano. We have another vehicle from another municipality and a third municipality pulling up here. Police officers all around the vehicle, uh, weapons drawn, trying to get the uh, uh, people inside to cooperate. And uh, and I see hands up here. I'm going to push the camera in a little tighter here. Again, we'll advise our viewers at home that this is unedited raw video here uh, coming to you directly from the chopper here as we watch the police officers in the takedown. It looks like they're uh, putting the uh, driver of the vehicle in cuffs there. They're opening the other door. Now it appears to be the only one person in the vehicle. They have that person in uh, custody there. Uh, and we'll bring the camera back out here. I'll try to give you an address here in just one second. Let me uh, let me just double check it. I don't want to lose the shot. I'm looking That's at the GPS. That's all right, Ralph. Sure. We're watching For the... Uh, Northwest 6th it... Street. Northwest 6th Street right off of Atlantic. Can I just pull out? Ralph, go back to that shot. They were taking there him out go. of the car. You're right. He's on the ground there now being taken into custody. Does it appear he's the only one in the vehicle, Ralph? Yeah, that appears to be the only person in the vehicle. So this has all come to an end here again, just uh, about four blocks north of Atlantic. They're checking the trunk now. You can see again, Officer Taser with a taser there drawn point pointing at the back of the uh, vehicle. But again, that subject now in custody after a pursuit that lasted uh, about uh, 20, just under 20 minutes, I'm going to say. Not, not even that long, but it came all the way up the highway, all the way up 95. Uh, the driver uh, using both breakdown lanes. Uh, we saw numerous red lights and stop signs uh, 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 run through by the vehicle. We also saw the uh, vehicle go the wrong way uh, against traffic there on um, Dixie Highway near the near the uh, blimp hangar at the uh, Pompano Airport. And again, now a, a number of police officers here. We're going to bring the camera out just a little farther, show you the scene here. You can see a lot of officers have responded out here. The police uh, helicopter from Broward Sheriff's Office still overhead here as they wrap this up now and take this subject into custody. And Ralph, real quick, we saw this again start near Broward Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. High rates of speed on the interstate and also on some side roads. Uh, he, he seemed to stop in this neighborhood were there officers in front of him? Uh, why did he stop in those parking spaces? Could you see ahead That's of that vehicle? That's a good question. There's a strong possibility that he was trying to get home or to a neighborhood that he knew. Uh, but uh, uh, I submit to you that the, with the number of police officers here on the street, he probably ran out of uh, real estate. Well, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better ending to a very right dangerous right. situation. A police chase at high rates of speed uh, in residential areas. Uh, we're getting word that uh, this man was wanted for an unknown crime and for whatever reason didn't want to stop. Multiple agencies, as you said, Ralph, involved. And uh, I mean, nobody hurt. Suspect put his hands in the air, they cornered him, and now he's in a police car. So there you have it, the end of uh, a very stressful 20, 30 minutes. As you said, Ralph, it started off with uh, Fort Lauderdale Police. There must be at least 20 police officers there. And the live picture is on the left side of your screen, and on the right is uh, tape just from a few minutes ago. This guy was hauling butt and just barely <laughs> missed several cars. In fact, he was going the wrong way right there. That was yeah. incredible. Lynn, Lynn, um when this started, the, uh, the, the supervisor for um, uh, Fort Lauderdale and the specific area that this was in, that they were involved with uh, was asking questions of the person that was involved with the pursuit, uh, asking them what was going on. That has to meet a certain criteria before they were pers will pursue a vehicle. So uh, based on that, just on that observation alone, the degree of, uh, of, of, of seriousness of why they were pursuing uh, this person uh, had to be serious enough for the police officers to do that. And that's when this uh, all began. Uh, and uh, again, as we said earlier, started in the area of Broward Boulevard when we heard it I believe I want to say that it was in maybe 9th or 10th Avenue uh, and again we were on another story so it, it may have started a little bit earlier than that but they did follow this vehicle uh, again driving at a high rate of speed on on, on public streets there and uh, it was a very very dangerous situation 
I'm getting some interference. It was a very dangerous situation as they came all the way up I-95 and uh, ended up here again about four blocks west of, it, of, west, of West Atlantic Boulevard, four blocks north of that, 27th Avenue and 6th Street in Pompano is where it ended up. 27th Avenue and 6th, Northwest 27th Avenue and 6th Street is what I'm being told. So. That's what we have for you right now. Okay, Ralph Rayburn uh, bringing us this great coverage of this chase up in Sky Force HD. Again, those live pictures. We saw the news media there watching this as it goes by. And right now we're getting very close to uh, Arlington. Arlington police are going to be standing by doing the same things we're seeing police do in Fort Worth do as far as trying to clear people off those roads. And as, as we... Go ahead. Uh, he's just, uh, you'll see here on your screen here, just a, a second, he's going to pop up on the grass here. Uh, change his mind at the last minute and get off again back on an exit. Uh, I'm a little bit ahead of you only because we're on a delay, so I apologize for that. But uh, you'll see him. He's, he's uh, changing his mind at the last minute, cutting across grass, cutting through an intersection. There were some officers that looked like they were blocking him off, uh, not allowing him to go further on 30. And I believe that's what may have prompted him to do that at the last minute. And now we're running along the access road of I-30 approaching, I believe, uh, well, we're about a mile from Six Flags uh, into a parking lot. We'll uh, see him into a parking lot here. Uh, officers, one, two, three, four, five, six officers speeding up here. And uh, he's going to turn left into this parking lot. Uh, a lot of officers speeding up trying to kick contain this. But uh, they're having a problem here scooting through this, this traffic. Luckily, not a lot of folks in this parking lot. He's yeah. going to turn, turn here and then come back out. And it appears he's going to get back on a north-south road. But not sure what that is. Yeah, Gary, let, 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 let me, uh, you're, you're on. Uh, obviously, you're seeing this live. We're on a bit of a delay. Let, let us see if we can talk this through here. Now head is southbound, of course. Make a left turn here. Six. Relatively close uh, right now. Turning all the way around, so you're going back Six. to the north uh, right now. White four-door car has been leading police uh, on this chase. They've been on I-30 for at, for two hours. Here they are now in a residential part of Arlington. You see, he just turned left into some kind of. Uh, we can assume it's some kind of open parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, this is the old TxDOT depot off of I. Starts to slow down. They just gave up an exit. He could have easily pulled off here, but is choosing not to. But if they, I suspect that if he pulls over here and is even close to stopping, officers will move in at a rapid pace here to try to prevent him from getting back on the road and uh, getting back into a chase scene here. Well, and certainly, Gary, the hope is that this person will decide to pull over and uh, stop and, and, and end this peacefully. And kind of went almost down the exit ramp. He's heading down that ramp. But it uh, looks like he's about to change his mind and uh, pull back on the highway, much to the frustration, I'm sure, of these police officers that he's not pulling over. Glad, I'm sure, that he's staying on the highway. But uh, slowing exit. And that feeder road is Brentwood Star. Brentwood Star Road. All right, and take a look at this, uh, this wide picture as Gary shows us the traffic situation. Take a look at that. You can see all of that traffic stopped along the eastbound lanes of I-30 near Oakland Boulevard, where police are trying to stop this white Nissan Sentra. Uh, that is an incredible thing to see, Gary, and just an idea, some bit of evidence of how this is affecting uh, so many people right now. Yeah, this, the, those people have to be very frustrated because there's, there's a line of police officers that's not letting anybody through, and, uh, you know, they, they're not going to... There really is no place at this point. You can see the folks on the side of the road. Again, he's stopping, starting, stopping, starting. Uh, it's obvious he's not going to outrun them. But yet he continues to do this and refuses to give up. So there's something, something a little off here in terms of uh, what the plan is here. I can tilt up here and show you a little bit, but uh, there is no other offer on here for quite some time. Uh, I'm looking at least uh, a half a mile, if not more. I don't want to pan too far off of this, but at least a half a mile or more uh, before there's another exit or, 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 or an opportunity for this person to get a And apparently some, uh, some experience with the carrying of weapons. So this is why police are, are very concerned about people standing too close or impeding traffic or giving them, a, or giving them some difficulty in trying to bring this, this uh, chase to a close. Right now his windows are all up, so that means that uh, police, I think, feel relatively comfortable. Looks like he's speeding up a little bit, Gary, from uh, what he was before. Yeah, speeding up a bit, and I, I see him spending more time looking out the window than he does looking uh, at the road. But, of course, traffic's been stopped, so he doesn't have much to worry about uh, in terms of traffic in front of him. But uh, much to his amu amusement, looking at us possibly and or the traffic on the side. Right behind him. His hazards are on. So this camera shot is, is headed east as he comes, is headed west, actually, as he comes east toward our camera. And that's, that's what that looks like. A you blocked I-30. Nobody is on this road except for that one motorist and the, and the police officer's phone. Now we've got sound. So this is what people are hearing coming toward them, which would explain why so many folks were getting out of their cars mm. to look, because they could hear this. And you see that flat tire there? Yeah, The right passenger now. tire is flat. 
So, which is why this person has been driving at speeds of, uh, you know, around 10 miles per hour for such a long time. Something else to take into, into consideration is that's what he is doing as well. Mm -hmm. He's been listening to those sirens the entire mm -hmm. time. Wow. And I can tell you from riding inside a squad car with the sirens going, it'll wear you down. It's loud. In addition to speakers, you, we understand the police have been speaking to this person through loudspeakers. And he's trying to carry on a telephone conversation as well. Right. So this is eastbound, or, uh, this is uh, East Chase, the East Chase overpass. We just passed underneath on eastbound I-30. Um, and you see him just pick up speed there and rush through. And again, this is still on a flat tire. That's what we see him doing right there on a flat tire. And he's driving over the median here and back onto Collins and around the traffic. Some uh, very dangerous maneuvers here uh, as we continue to watch this driver flee police. So he is right at I-30 and Collins. Up until now, this chase has, hasn't been that dramatic. He's been leading police going maybe 10, maybe five miles per hour on the highway. But then a short time ago, he gets off the highway. He's now in Arlington, and now he's driving erratically through city streets. We've seen him go through neighborhoods. He's mm -hmm. going in and out, in between cars. Uh, he's whizzed by children walking uh, on the sidewalk. He has no regard for, uh, for any traffic. And there you see him driving on the... This is, just so you know where we are, this is the road to Six Flags that he's about to get on right now. So this is North Arlington. The westbound toward Cooper. On the right-hand side should be some kind of a golf course. Uh-oh. Well, now he's moved off of the main road, so this should be interesting to see. Gary, uh, you can see where he's headed. I don't know what is through there. Looks like he's trying to get... Uh this, this is an empty parking lot, a construction strip zone. Officers are moving in really soon. They really wanted to catch him inside there. But now uh, he's making his way back to the road, and he actually uh, will probably get out of this um, of this parking area and back onto the road again, which uh, is really disappointing because it's uh, traffic is picking up, the speed is picking up, and uh, he's southbound yeah. now on, on uh, that. That would be southbound on Collins, uh, it, Gary. If I'm correct, what you'll see up ahead of him on the left-hand side, a few blocks down, should be uh, should, should be the, the stadium. Uh, and on the right hand side, of course, all kinds of traffic. But again, this is the busiest tra This is the busiest area in terms of retail in ter for Arlington, I think, in North Arlington, right, Gary? Yeah, it's very off the highway. Okay, and Gary, as we can talk about all these folks, uh, I don't believe any of these folks on news media would be my guests. Maybe one or two. That's just the public hoping to catch a glimpse of what's going on. Now, granted, they're up on top and and out of harm's way in that area, but uh, that's the kind of stuff that they're dealing with. Uh, and officers don't have time to deal with that, and they probably won't deal with that particular incident unless it becomes a problem traffic-wise. But they've got uh, bigger issues to take care of here, keeping folks who are on the officers themselves so far, right? Okay, I'm giving you a tight shot here. I'll zoom in here a second. And you'll see that um, this person has a cell phone. Uh, he appears to be talking on his cell phone. He's looking out the window, possibly uh, at us, at the attraction, and just weaving. We don't see anybody in either the front seat or the back seat, uh, but it appears to be an empty vehicle. But a, a very, very casual, acting very casual as he uh, one hand drives with one hand and, and visits on a cell phone with somebody uh, on the other hand. And... Uh, a very unusual shot here of being able to actually look inside this car and try and figure out what what is going on here you can see uh, again moving his hands changing the vehicle more interested in what the sideshow is outside than uh, anything else and uh, unfortunately that's probably feeding his uh, desire not to pull over that you know he's creating a sideshow spectacle and he's probably pretty proud of himself for doing it yeah he does uh, have a, a bit of a smirk on his face at least from what we're seeing right now this picture you're showing you let me say that just a while ago we passed the cook's uh, lane bridge and we're now hearing from fort worth police that uh, they in fact have gone on to that bridge and told people to get off quite quickly and for two reasons and this should this should be emphasized to the people who are ahead of this chase uh that this person has a history of not we don't know his name the police obviously do that this person has a history of non-compliance